Hello and welcome to another Disgaea class guide. We're going to be talking about three different classes today, starting with the Cleric. The Cleric is all about healing and she's your primary healing class in the game. She's focused around this as well as some light support roles. As you might imagine, you're going to want to concentrate on res as your main stat, because uh, healing spells scale with this. The other stat to concentrate on really depends on you. It's whether you want to use staffs or bows. So that's uh, intelligence or hit, respectively. There is an e ability which allows bows to scale with res instead of attack called res arrows. So you can use a for a bit of extra damage if you want to try something a bit different. The cleric has two support spells as their unique specials. Stat barrier is the first. As the name implies, this allows you to prevent the stat lowering effects of enemy moves. I don't find this one to be super useful, as it's far too situational, but it's a nice tool to have available. The other unique skill however, is much better. Spiritual gain increases the target's SP, int, res and speed. I find that buffs, especially ones that can increase stats that are used for attacking, can be very useful from both early game to late. And I mean everyone has their own playstyle of course, but stats are very important in Disgaea, and a straight increase to them isn't something to scoff about. As for some useful abilities, yeah, well anything really goes with this class, and so I choose just to augment and improve healing and support. Take a look. So the Cleric is a versatile healer and support class, but will primarily be used to heal as they can learn the healing spells up to the Terror level, which is the maximum. Okay, moving on now over to the male healer class. I guess the old design for the clergy was too masculine? Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm not here to judge, so... The clergy is your alternative healer class, and he plays a little bit different. His unique ability will heal status ailments automatically when he heals HP, which means you don't have to waste a turn using Espoir, if that's how you say that word. Not an amazing ability, but it's a nice bonus. His mastery would allow him to learn spears at a quick rate, but due to his low attack, you're going to want to stick to staffs for this one. The clergy is more support oriented than the cleric, but he can still learn healing spells up to the same maximum level, which is terror. The clergy's unique skills are similar to his sister class. So first of all, he has ailment barrier, and this will stop status ailments from affecting the target for three turns. Once again, this is a kind of a bit too situational to be good, but then we also have another great stat buff in the form of his other unique skill, Physical Gain. This increases HP, Attack, Defense and Hit, making it extremely useful to support and buff a variety of classes. Most of the abilities I would recommend are similar to the Cleric as the two share an almost identical role, but take a look anyway. Clergy is more support focused healer, and yes, he is a dude. Okay, now we're moving on to something interesting. This is a more utility class. The Thief isn't the greatest in terms of raw stats. She's made as a support role after all. She can handle a gun, or later on, a fist, or bow. And she's got a decent speed and eventually a decent attack which is really not suited to close combat at all. With low HP, you might give her a gun if she must fight, but really, she's there to steal. The Thief's unique ability is called Thief Skills, which doubles your stealing success rate, 
but this doesn't just increase your chances, it actually hires the cap from a maximum of 50% to steal to a maximum of 99%. This makes the thief invaluable when you need to steal rare items. And if you want those coveted rank 40 items, you're going to be wanting a good thief around. The thief actually has five unique skills. All of them are really unusual utility skills. So firstly we have create box, which does exactly that, it creates a box. And your imagination is to be used uh, from how to get some use out of this. Uh, but I suppose you could use it to solve some puzzles in the main story or to get some height for some abilities that scale with that. But it's open to experimentation, really. I have heard of people using this to um, quickly level up the subclasses. It's just another example of this guy handing you tools to do whatever you want and break the game. So create barrel is similar to this, but you can throw the barrel to cause a bit of explosive damage. And then next up, there's Thief's Key. This instantly destroys a chest regardless of how much HP it has. Not the most useful skill as most chests are fairly weak anyway, unless you're exploring the very depths of Land of Carnage item world. Then we have Snag Item, and this allows the thief to steal without the use of a hand item. Finally we have Snag Heart, and this steals a small amount of stats from the enemy. The stat is different per enemy, but this isn't a terribly efficient way of gaining more stats, but I do appreciate that the thieves of the Neverworld are so good at stealing that they can now actually steal concepts and emotions. This is some Jojo stand crap if I've ever seen it. As for abilities, you can take the thief a multitude of different ways. I tend to want them as a hit and run unit and also to augment their utility. So let's look at some examples. The Thief is an absolute must if you intend to get some of the better equipment in the game and can also provide some interesting support and utility in other areas too. She's a great versatile unit, but she isn't the best in pure power. And that's about going to do it for today. Thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe here and also check us out on Twitch too. Uh, if you go to twitch.tv slash voxelstar and follow, you'll get an alert every time we go live and play some interesting games. Anyway, see you for the next class guide. See ya.